Welcome to the Le Jardin gar um, Garden Trug. This can be used, this is a, just an awesome little trug. We've got a great rose lesson. I'm doing a really, really slicey, choppy thing. The trug itself is so functional. Um, we've added some little feet to it, but you can totally, it comes pre-distressed and pre-antiqued. You can put in, these are ginormous size wine glasses, big size, it's, but it's not oversized. You can fit three bottles of wine in there, plus I think three wine glasses, no, probably just the two wine glasses. Um, but then you can take it and you can make it into a planter. You could put it in your guest your guest room, guest bathroom, that kind of thing. You could put like five inch little pots, have an herb garden, and it's just versatile. You could put um, the pots in there and put the silverware and napkins for your um, garden party, that kind of stuff. Just anything I can think of a million uses. Um, it stores CDs. Um, just a lot of things. So I know that we all appreciate super, um, super useful surfaces, and this one is certainly at the top. All right, one of the first things I want to do when I'm laying out my pattern is I'm going to get rid of my excess tracing paper. The yellow tracing paper tears straight on both grains, which is an awesome benefit. I traced the side of my trug here, which is a, just an awesome pre-finished um, distressed surface. And I'm going to fold my rectangle in half, meet the edges, and I'm going to find my center, and then I'm going to find my center the other way. So when you want to lay out a pattern, like this isn't even just designing, this is just finding your center so that you um, can lay things out straight. I have astigmatism, and that means that a lot of times my things will be leaning, so you want to be careful not to work against yourself. So now I know exactly where straight is when I get my pattern. I'm going to fold it the same way. I'll make a mark so that I can see through and I'll know exactly where square is on my on my layout. All right, I've got my trug and what I've done is I've sprayed it with the Americana Sealer Finisher in matte. And the reason that I sprayed it, if this comes pre-finished, it's probably from China. We have no idea what it's made out of or what, what kind of medium they've used to make this crackle. It is definitely a chipped paint effect. It's not a fake chipped paint effect, like it's not an image. So I want to make sure that whatever is on here is kind of sealed down underneath something neutral. So I've neutralized my surface, I'm going to trace my pattern, and then I'm going to base the center with the cool neutral. All right, I want to take a little bit of our plantation pine, well, a lot more of our plantation pine mixed with our soft black. I'm going to create a glazing color. I'm going to use my big workhorse angle shader and just blend it out real soft get it built up so I feel like I have enough width of color I'm going to come onto our box and we're just going to go around the edges in a kind of a sloppy kind of a way I'm beating up just a little bit so I'll work into my paint Okay, and that's just going to give us a little bit more framing than we have. It'll come along the top, and we'll do the other side. Okay, if you get any beating up, just go back, dry your brush. A little bit drier is better. we can see and we'll come down here same thing it's a very rustic box so we want it to look rough <clears throat> all the way to the edges and you want to do your other edges as well you can go back and just darken it just a little bit and then that might be, we might go more into just the soft black in the corners. Just to, sorry, just to bring that color down. Bring the corner down, actually. Okay, so I'm liking that. Next we'll talk about how we're going to mix our colors. Okay, so we have... Napa and we have Antique Maroon. And we're going to take Napa and Antique Maroon and we're going to mix them together and make a dark mix. We 
could sneak in just a little bit, a tiny bit of the soft black to knock it back down one more shot. Maybe a little bit more. I got a little bit of green in there, but I'm not going to worry about that. When you're mixing colors, you want to have an offset palette knife so that you don't um, run your hand through the paints as you're um, mixing. Okay, we're going to have out just a little bit of our Traditions Faux Finishing Medium. We're going to do a little bit more of a strokey kind of rose today. Uh, instead of a blocked-in rose, let's get a brush that we like. I'm going to fit my brush in to see if how it's going to fit with my rose shape. I'm going to block into, I need some white running out of this bottle here. Oops. Okay, so I'm just blotting into my faux finishing medium. We're going to make our brush just kind of loaded with our raspberry color. Just flat, 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 flat. We'll go into the wrong side. I do that about every project ten times when I'm doing roses. Okay, I think I have my palette set up backwards is what I think is going on. A little bit of medium. A little bit of raspberry. The heel goes into the dark mix. The toe goes into white. And it's going to become a kind of another pink color. And we'll go back and forth, blending it all together. We call this a blending strip. A little bit more white. Okay, we're going to go on to our rose. And this guy's going to be facing up. Um, let's get, sure, get organized here. Okay, so we're going to make three strokes. I'm going to go up. And it can be choppy, and we're going to go across, and we're going to go down. And we're going to bring them together. I'm going to put more white, and then I'm going to blend again. And we're going to repeat just a little bit further to south. Add a little bit more white, and I can blend back into my dark. And go back and forth. And this little guy right here is just going to be kind of a bridge padded thing. Okay, so there's three strokes. Notice that I'm not getting real long throated. I'm not walking down, 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 down. Okay, I'm going to reload the dark. Blend that out. Okay, and then the next thing we want to do is we want to give the indication of an extra petal or two. So I just make that line right there, and I just leave it. It's even with the stroke. And I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to make another line, except for I can't see it. I make another line, and another line. We'll pretend like he ends there. And then we'll bring this down, just really stroking that out. See how I'm leaving the little rough edges, like almost jagged edges. We'll make another stroke, we'll make another stroke. I'm reloading with my white each time. Now we'll make another stroke and we'll make another stroke. Okay, and now we have a lovely rose bowl. I'm going to go into just Napa right now. I want it to be just a little bit redder. So we're coming around the outside. <clears throat> okay, and now we're going to come up here to the top and we're going to just do a stroke slide moment. Okay, and actually I don't really like that Napa on there. I'm going to go into the mix. Napa was just a little too much. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. And I'm just going to turn my brush every time I want to kind of come around a corner. Okay, so now we have our body of our rose. At this point, I want to let him dry, or her, probably it's a her, and I'm going to go ahead and go into my dark mix, and what I want to do is I want to redden up 
where I have um, over blended or whatever. And I'm just going to do one side and I really probably need to let this dry. And we can do the same thing down here. Just get them dry. Um, just a little bit red it up. <clears throat> okay, now I am going to let them dry. I'm going to do the same thing to these roses over here. Okay, we've got our rose down there. Let's see if I can find the camera here. Okay, now I've got the big rose here. The big rose is behind this littler rose. So I want to always do the one that's going to be, I'm going to finish this one before I go to this one because this one is going to be painted on top. Back into our medium. <clears throat> Pardon me. A little bit of raspberry to flavor everything. The raspberry kind of gets swallowed up by the time we're done. Um, we're going to have the dark mix on the, the heel of the brush and the white on the toe. Give it one little scrape the opposite way. Okay, and we want this one to be looking out over yonder. So we're going to go up. Keep loading white. Oops, and I ran my arm straight on through my other rose. Be careful of that. Dry him if you need to dry him. And then we'll make some more. Don't tr don't drop down too far. <clears throat> okay, I don't think that one's going to show very much. So this one is our bridge, and he just gets muddled in there. Then we'll make some pretend pretend strokes. And for 10 strokes and draw him kind of down a little bit further. This one I'm preserving that dark. I'm not sure how I'm doing that this time. Okay, so we're going to make some strokes. Don't drop down too far. Okay, now I want to do those outer strokes. Let's make some shoulders on this rose. Swallowed up my white here. Let's go back. Okay, that one's a little smoother on the finish there. And now we'll go and make the inside. Tap, tap. My brush is straight up and down and on the angle. Okay. Okay, that was just a little sideways chisel stroke. Now we'll rinse my brush. I'm going to go ahead and tint my rose just a little bit with a little bit. Probably I'll go into the Napa because this one got a little bit of the dark brown in it. And I'll let everybody dry. All right, we're going to repeat the process. I probably should have done this step um, while it was still wet. I forgot. Okay, so we're going to go into our three colors. I'm gonna, I, I look for a balance of colors over here. This one it got taken over by too much dark, so now I'm looking for something that becomes a little pinker, but it still maintains the dark, the integrity of the dark, if you will. And then I want that splash of white. Okay, so we need a couple of petals on the inside here. So we're going to just go ahead and just dab on those petals. Okay, and those are your front petals. I'm do the same thing over here. Kind of already have one or two on this one. Yeah, I think we might be okay here. Yeah, we don't want that too screaming. All right, I think I can go ahead and highlight. I'm going to switch to a short bright, and I'm going to get a small short bright. So this is the number six. 
little teeny bit of water, little bit of paint on the edge, and I'm going to keep it on my edge. Okay, and I got stuff all over the place. So what I want to do is I want to leave the paint, so I'm going to start out with my clean um, side of my brush. Scoop that over. I've really got a little ridge right built up on the edge of my, my brush. Okay, so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to start with the clean and just give it a little bit of a ledgy ledgy thing. Okay, we'll come over here, touching just little white highlights. Then we'll come over here and we'll pretend like there's some rose petals right there. Bring some down here. They're not everywhere. Okay, and that just gives us a little bit of frilliness and a little bit of um, fluff, if you will. Okay, we're going to repeat on the other side. <clears throat> okay, we'll come over here. I'm going to lead with that clean edge. Leave some right down here in the base. You got to lead with the clean edge and you got to let the chisel do the work. Okay, so now I'm going to come over here. I'll reverse it. Okay, and we'll just walk our, our little eye down the rows. And we can maybe come in. This guy looks like he needs some right in here. Yeah, I like it. Alright, we're going to dab some of our dark mix of the green onto our Raphael liner. And let's see, I want, I'll do it down here first. I'm going to pull this along this edge and just dot. Dot, 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 dot. Very close to the edge and we're going to skip into the um, Hauser um, light green and let that just scatter within and grow out of that. Then we'll wipe our brush off a little bit, go into Whispering Turquoise Oops, Whispering Turquoise is kind of a strong color. Okay, give that a couple of dots. And then finally we'll go into just a little bit of Golden Straw. Make sure you just have a little bits on your brush. Okay, and then you just give yourself the little dots and that just gives you a filled in circle center. Okay, I'm going to take just a teeny bit of Napa, and I mean a really teeny bit with some water in my brush. Leave a teeny, teeny, teeny bit. And I want this rose to not be the same on both sides. So I'm just going to pinkify it on one side. Okay, that gives me a little weight on one side, but not weight everywhere. Okay, I'll come over here, same thing. No reason why you can't just play with your rose a little bit. You don't want it to be too monochromatic though. Okay, so now we're ready to paint our second rose up here. I think I'm going to change down one size brush. Let's see, this is a 3 8 and this is a 3 8 so I'm not going to change any size brush. Mm, can I do it with this one? This one is a one quarter inch, and I'm liking that I'm getting the chisel that I wanted for that really kind of rough and raggly edge um, there. So that rose is on top of there. I'm going to go in my medium and a little bit of the raspberry, and I'm going to block over my white just so that I don't end up with weird um, crossover colors. In the meantime, why don't we paint a couple of buds. We'll go into our medium, a little bit of the raspberry base, our white, and our dark mix. I'm going to wipe some of that off over there. I feel like it was just going to take over. See, we're going to have leaves. 
sleeves, loose sleeves. Okay, so I feel like these two are in even spaces, so I'm going to make sure that that doesn't stay that way. I could have one that's almost a little bit more opened. Move him. Let's move him closer to him, maybe, and have him be a little bit simpler. Okay, so he's just a closed one, and then we'll give this guy just a little bit more structure out here. Like he's a little baby rose. Okay, and this guy I think has a bud down here. Reach across, get some more white. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think that's probably pretty good. I'm going to hit the blow dryer in this other one. All right, we're going to use our faux finish medium. And we're going to dip the toe into white. We'll go into the mix. And I forgot my medium, so I'll just go sneak a little bit of that in. Every now and again, it's good to wipe your brush off and just pretend and move over that you've got like enough of whatever you think you're going to have. All right, this guy's going to be looking towards the this way. So we've got one looking out, one looking out, and one looking like, like off over to this direction. <clears throat> and do I have, this is not my smaller brush, so I have to reload. Yeah, you can do it with a bigger brush, but it's just a little bit more um, awkward. Okay, so we'll do it again. Of the toe, forgetting the pink again. And the heel into the dark. You don't want this super juicy, so every now and again just go reach over and wipe off your brush. Things are getting super juicified. <clears throat> okay, so once again we're gonna go up. Lots of lots of strokey stroke strokes. I'm, see what I'm doing? I'm tapping my brush. This is kind of a new little technique that I've decided to, that I needed to have. And I've got to share, when I start painting roses, and I haven't painted them for a while, so here's what I did. I started out with my standard technique, and I created that rose. Then I went and looked at Beth Wagner's video and created her rose, sort of. And then I came over here and decided I needed to fix that because I didn't wasn't happy with how round that was. So I came over here and that's too fluffy and that's too this and that's too that. And then I started with this little chop chop, practiced a little bit more choppiness, and now I have this really jaggedy edge little thing going on and I'm loving it. So even people who know how to paint roses sit down first and they just wake their hands up and you know get familiar with their, their subject. Okay, so we'll go in for the third, the second row up here, and just chop, 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 chop. Totally digging this little choppiness thing. Okay, so to close it up, I'm going to make my my lines because I want to have that impression of those extra petals. Losing my pink. Go back and make that impression again. Like that. <clears throat> okay, and we'll go into our pink again. Brush is getting a little fully loaded. So go out, go out, and I'll just chop, chop, chop around. 
And then we'll give ourselves those middle petals, which is the step that I had us drawing on before. Okay, now I have lost some of my pink, but I'm going to fix that. Okay, we're going to go in and just shade, whoops, with way too dark a color. <clears throat> a little bit of Napa, we're going to glaze on these guys down here. Okay, I'll come over here and give them a little bit more of a glaze. Start just moving your color around. This is what's fun about painting is you don't have to be done just because your flower looks finished. You can actually wait and let it rest and then go back to it and reapply some colors. I can do my centers on. I've got the soft black plus the um, plantation pine mix. And I can totally go in and just do a little bit of the depth down here on my, my little guys. I'm waiting for other stuff to dry. Get our light green. It's totally, when you go into this uh, throwback, I think Raw Style Cup does a really pretty rose with some punctuated color in the throats. It's really pretty. No matter what kind of rose or whose rose you're painting, you're almost always going to have a DNA of your own. So keep that in mind because it is it is always going to be your hand that's expressing it. Okay, so I think we're ready to go ahead and we've got to deepen him up just a little bit. He needs a little float of the darker color and I got a little bit too... I'm going to go right over that petal that I stroked in there. See, that's the other thing that you can do. You can totally go right over petals and just re-put it back in. I think I'm still wanting this side of this rose to get a little bit deeper, too. And I'll just go back into it and re-highlight it. Yeah, I like that a lot better. Where am I at? Here. Okay, see how that just added? It's just a bunch more depth. So how do we go back in and highlight? Let me show you. We go into our white, just float it on our brush, and just give it whatever highlights we took away. Okay, and that just adds the depth. I've got a monitor in front of me that I'm supposed to be looking at, but I had all these tall bottles stacked in front. <clears throat> okay, so now we're on this guy right here. We're on that final highlight step, and we're going to go into white. Alright, let's get him. I want to pull it towards me. Hardly any water, really, really, really just a dry float. Go ahead and just lay, lay some stuff down there. Okay. And there we have two little layered up roses. The next thing we want to do is we want to give ourselves some leaves. <coughs> So our leaves are going to be interesting because we want to make them very washy. So instead of using water, let's use a little medium. Okay, so we're going to go into our faux finish medium. And we're going to go into the plantation pine mix. And we're just going to squanch it around on our palette. Got a little bit of pink in my brush where it's not washed out. I don't care. <clears throat> okay, let's see how many roses did it in the leaves that I plan. Okay, so we're going to go back over here. And we're just going to put in some ghost leaves. Okay, so that starts getting ghostified. And make them different sizes. Don't make everybody the same size. And make them different darknesses. Okay, so maybe this guy can be a little bit heavier. Maybe a little wider. It could be darker by the flower. OK, 
Okay, just really just let the choppiness show through. I really, really, really like choppy roses, rose details. Okay, up here we're just going to give it some really soft little ghost leaves. Blotting. Okay, don't be afraid to blot. We can add some more here and there. Add some more medium. If you want to add, you know, just like, so we're going to have like a little jungle of like rose leaves out here. Maybe I want to go into, that's not my medium, that's white paint. Maybe a little bit of the lighter green, see how that looks. That's okay, let's try it with a little bit of the, the blue. And you can't really see, so it's got to be the darker. Okay, we'll bring some of this stuff out. Same thing on our other side. Okay, so we know we want to have something right here where the V is. And we want something coming out on top of this rose. go out here and this row is going to some big guys. I'm not really connecting them to anything. I'm just getting them getting them blocked in. And once again choppy is the name of the game. Now more medium will make more faded out rose um, leaves. And so then that becomes just like another layer. And then they're really ghosty. Okay, I kind of want these guys just to trail along. <clears throat> We're going to go into our round brush and our dark and our medium, our dark green mix. And we're going to give these guys some, totally give them their um, stems. Then on the calyx, coming up of here, just wiggle and give it, you know, a nice, and we want one coming out the back end over there. Give it something to cup it. And you can also give yourself something to hang on to down here, like that rose has got to come out of something. <clears throat> We could go into our light green on top of that and highlight it so you can see it. Give him a little bit more. Okay. And now I think I think we might need a little bit of a vine action going on around here. I'm going to use my medium, picking up soft black and the green, but more towards the soft black side. I'm kind of just brush loading. Okay, let's have, I think, let's go, zoom. Okay, that's way too dark. I'll wipe my brush out, add more medium. I'll try and get this palette on here because I think it's interesting what's going on here. So I've added a lot of medium. I'm going to move the paint over. Okay, and then let's just make this happen. So I'm going to hold on to the back of my brush, and I'm going to make this rose vine. Maybe nailed over here. I want it a little bit darker. And then we want to crisscross a little bit. Okay. Same thing over here. Okay, I'm going to come out here, bring it along. some stuff out here and that can get darker and stronger in this outer edge okay we'll bring a little 
little bit of a dark stem line. Just some sort of hidden details. Nothing too, too, too um, laborious. All right, then on the lines that we drew around, I'm going to go back and deepen them at the base. And so that's just pulling them in. might need some little berries of some sort. I'll figure that out in a second. We'll go and shade our leaves with the plantation pine since we, and it's just a, a float, since we washed them. And we're going to go one side or the other. So don't do both sides and choppy. Let's repeat our choppiness. Okay, no, no finished stuff. No sharp lines here. Give him just a little bit of extra. All right, starting to get a little deep, a little depth. I love the rusticness of this piece. I love that it is just so cottagey. I can think of about 850 uses for it. Um, this actually fits wine bottles and um, gloves and gardening tools, guest towels for your guest bathroom or your master bathroom for that matter. Just It's just got uses, uses, uses. <clears throat> okay, so we want to have just a little wash on our rose over here. We didn't get a glaze on him, on her. One side or the other. Let's see which side do we want. I think we'll do it on this. We went ahead and put our final things on and didn't give our wash. But we can just repeat that. That's what we've learned today. And I don't like that as strong. A little lick. And that just takes some of it off. We can give this, let's do it over here a little bit. We can go into our um, wash that out of my brush into a little bit of our leaves and give them not like that we don't give them just a little bit of pink on their tips as well not everybody gets pink and that's the Napa red I think I'm basically doing it on the opposite corner that from where I shaded. Okay. I'm going to go in with my Raphael liner and I'm going to give the leaves a little bit of detail, not all of the leaves, with the cool neutral. And that just gives them just that little bit. And by putting it over the um, dark that I just did, then it gives it almost like um, that's where things are folded up. So you just layer over the top. Now I'm going to go into soft black and I'm going to just trail along one side or the other of the deeper edges of things that are lining, so of these vines, like almost like a drop shadow. Just want them to stand out but be like they're highlighted. 
And that one just got a little sharp looking. But some of these leaves could have some dark veins. And this poor guy could have like a lot more dark. Okay, we want to go with our some watery plantation pine black mix. And we want to put some little plop leaves coming off into our middle. just going to be little tiny viney things and we can go into the soft black where it's in the darker area. We can make them trail in, we can make them trail out. We can do whatever we want. There are leaves. Okay, I'll go into a little bit of soft black that's watery. Mix it with my green. And then these guys out here, you got to be careful because the ones out here are going to start looking a little bit like they belong to the cracks and things like that. Okay, so if I could try it. Yeah, they just look a little bit more like a crack. Okay, but I do like them on this inside. Do we think we have enough thing? Fine. That was no good. Okay. All right, I'm going to go into my leaves and I'm going to shade them one more time, a little bit just closer in to make the rose be on top. Okay, so oops, get that depth. Same thing back up here. Okay, and that's just going to give us that little bit more interest. So see what I did is I snuck up on this the shading. Wasn't sure how much I wanted, knew I needed some, didn't know, so I did one, then I came back and did some more. <clears throat> but that's definitely holding, let's get that, holding those roses up on there a little bit better. <clears throat> okay, and now I don't know what I want to do, so I'm going to stop and evaluate. Okay, I decided to give it a little bit of a rim, so I'm just lining around the edge. And the, the color is going to be the Napa mix with the raspberry, about 50-50 of the mix plus the raspberry. We're going to go into a little bit of the blue, and I want to give a little bit of some blue accents out on some of these areas. go in. Let's give ourselves, uh, let's see how we're going to do this. I want a little bit of blue. It's, I don't think this is going to be the right blue. Let's give a little bit of blue into the background. I think we might need one or two more little rose buds. We need one over here and maybe an intermediate one over here. So we'll go into our medium, same steps, you know the drill by now. Definitely running out of room on the palette, which is not a problem. Okay, so we'll make that come out and maybe land. There. And then 
maybe we'll make one more come out and land. And while we're at it, let's keep going. Make one come up here. And give this guy one more. So now what I'm doing is giving myself pink, um, the pink story. Okay, we want odd numbers, so we'll go into... Oh, I came down there. Yeah, maybe we give ourselves one more. Let's see. Kind of opening up. He's a little bit bright for that spot. Okay. I do love the blue on there. Okay, we're going to spread some of our pink around. We're going to go into Napa and really wipe that brush off. I'm going to connect our pinks just a little bit, give us a little hint of pink where we need it. Whoa, computer. Okay, so we're just making our foundation just a little bit stronger. This little guy over here is just a little too pink. Okay, now let's go into the soft black. And bring those corners in. and just a little bit this center pop up a little bit and then we can go into our reds I think I'm hesitant here and there throughout this thing and that'll bring up some of that distressed look I'm going to swap brushes out and then we'll go into a little bit of our soft green the um, Hauser Light and we'll give ourselves just a little bit more of a green area here. And we can go into the dark plantation pine. And just where that's at. Give ourselves that hint of... I can dig it. We're going to spatter with the soft black. And I need a heavy handled brush. So washy, washy, wash. Really tap off all the paint. We'll spatter with that around the outside edge. And then let's take a little bit of the Hauser light green, which I don't think I have much left of. Let's do a little bit of our blue. Random color of doom here. Just adds a little bit of speckles of surprise. Okay, I'm going to trail it along right here, maybe. Oof, that was a lot. Okay, and I, I think a little bit more soft black on that side. a little bit of anchoring right there on the dark side of our roses. So when you don't want snow, you anchor your brush real low and you'll be able to control those spatters. And you know what I'm not digging over here? I'm not digging how that rose petal is coming in front of my other rose. I'm going to go back in him just a little bit. And give him his petal back. There we go. Makes him look a little bit 
less chopped up or something. You can have just a couple more little highlights. And with this brush loaded with just a little bit of these soft pinks, I can streak my way through the middle. And maybe with a little bit of yellow, how would that be? Very dried, a little bit of yellow going through, a little bit of pink. Very cottagey. Let's try a little bit of that yellow out on our edge. I'm running through my dots. Not a smart move. Okay, I really don't know that I care for it or don't care for it one way or the other. Okay, I think we'll go with a little bit of our blue and pick up some of that raspy edge on our leaves. Maybe that's going to be too light. <clears throat> Maybe just a little bit here and there. Just blot, blot and blend. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, I absolutely decided that I don't think I need these feet on here. They're so cute. Okay, let's get wide here. I'm going to just put them on with some hot glue. I'll show you what... There's with and without, but I really think it's darling with, so I'm going to do it. These feet make me happy, I don't know why. I'm just going to do hot glue because this isn't going to be one of those moments where it has to be very structural. It's definitely a decor item. As this is coming together, I can totally see this with some glasses with your silverware for your picnic and your outdoor stuff, wine glasses, wine bottle, wine glass. Um, spa stuff. I don't know. I just, this thing just rocks. And the the functionality of it is really very surprising to me. Um, when we got it, I was just like, what could you use it for? And then it just, everything, you know. You could put coasters in one side. You could put napkins in the other for your table service. Um, just just about anything. You could put books in there. Yeah, it's got a lot of, a lot, a lot of uses. Okay, we're going to do lettering. I've got this on my lap because it's just a little bit more comfortable, but I'll start you out here. I'm going to mix my um, antique maroon with my raspberry and a little bit of water and a round brush. Dry off the ferrule. And then I'm just going to line the details. Okay, I'm going to just do it with the um, that color, and then I think we'll see if we need to dress it up. Okay, let's see if we can bring a little bit of our green down there. Get a little water on our brush. A little bit of plantation pine, a little bit. This project is a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And let's just drag some of this greenery down in through. And then let's make some little... Let's bring in some scrolls. And that should make me happier, like it belongs together. Okay, we'll add some little leaves. I'm using just the side of my brush. This is called a chocolate chip stroke. Okay, and I think Bob's your uncle. I think we got this. Okay, so then what we do next is we go ahead and spray to do your finishing. You probably want to glue your feet on last. I do things in kind of a bad sequence. Spray the whole thing. It's pre-antiqued inside and out. Got awesome plants we can pop on in there. That's like a four or five inch pot. Super, super useful functional um, little um, truck.